Make sure you check out the first one, which is called I Hate Mitsubishi. I think at the time it's about 76,000 views, which is doing pretty decent. Last time I went wee 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 and a couple of people got all wee wee pissed off. Wow, he's damaging his unit. He's blowing it up. He's going to kill him. It's going to blow it all up. Everything's going to be damaged. Oh, my God. He's just an idiot. He don't know what he's doing. He just doesn't want to figure it out. This is a little too technical for him. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you say so, Bob. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we're here at the shop to pick up my parts for my job. One of my most popular videos probably in the last several months has been I Hate Mitsubishi. Guess what? I still hate them. Here's the thing. I never said they weren't good. I just said the training sucked. The whole reason for saying that was to get my point driven across to Mitsubishi so that they might feel embarrassed to the point where they actually do something to correct the problem. It wasn't so much to say that it was junk. Like I said, we're gonna pull the refrigerant charge. We're gonna see how far off I am. Now granted, it's been running now for, I don't know, three months and he wasn't in a hurry to get us back. So. Been pretty happy with these Empicon recovery machines. They've been pretty good. I'll leave links down below. It's a little bigger size-wise than the Appion, but I think it does it a little quicker. So this is gonna be your liquid line right here because it's feeding your electronic expansion valves. Here's your suction. That's your true dedicated suction line right there. Now they don't have any plugs back here. I've not had a problem with these yet. You can buy them. I built mine. I have a fuse in there. Got a little light in it. Let you know that you're running 120 or over 120 or not because it's going to be super bright. That's how I do it uh, when I don't have anything available. Got my Schrader core janked out of these. Make it a little faster. Okay, this holds factory charge of uh, eight pounds, 13 ounces. We're pretty much about there. We're already down to two pounds, four pounds on both sides. And we've only got 2.5 pounds out of it. Yeah, not too impressive. It was a heck of a leak. Something you don't have on some of those newer ones now is the purge cycle. It's kind of nice because it gets all the liquid out of the machine and just vapor from here to the tank, which we've isolated it. That's all the more vapor there is. Not bad. Completely zeroed out. Two and a half pounds, basically, is what we had. There we go. Yeah. Never seen one leak, huh? Whatever. Yeah, they brought it all the way outside. That shoots uh, some people's philosophies that it was at the flare fitting leaking. Obviously that was not the case when the flare's all the way out here. Looks to me like they've got two line sets going in here. So they got one going into the attic and one going to the one that's on the other side of this wall. There we go. That way it doesn't have to be pulled back through. So that's gonna shoot your flare fitting idea right out of the water. Everybody's like, Oh no, you 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 got a leak behind the thing. Ain't it, don't it suck to be wrong? So here's that one. Let's go see if this other one over here is the same way. Look at that. The other one's on the outside wall too. So that means that flare fitting's way down here also. Which means old Rickster there didn't uh, pick up a leak that was in the behind the unit. Look at that. I think detector's pretty doggone good one, but I say it probably ain't gonna pick a leak up on a flare joint all the way outside. No, sir. I would say probably not. Yeah, that looks like channel lock marks. That's always comforting. I don't feel any oil on that at all. If it was leaking, we'd probably have some oil there. We'll put some tape over top of that. That way we don't knock nothing into the refrigerant line because that would probably screw it up just a touch. I myself personally am going to redo both of those flares. Uh, maybe. <laughs> this is the problem when you do what you did here. I actually, I'm not gonna do that until I get this thing back out here because I'm not taking a chance 
of not being long enough. That would probably stink. There we go. This is where a second person would be lovely. Don't have that though. But I do have that. There we go. I usually change it in place, but I honestly believe it'd be easier just to do it external. Yeah, they really screwed me when they did it like that. No play at all in there. To get back in there and unhook those wires. They should have left play outside out there. Did a loop down, back up, and then in. It's way too tight. There we go. That gives me enough room there to get inside there. Now I've done total, I think, two of these so far. So these are the smaller ones, and although they're very similar to the same, to be honest with you, we're figuring it out as we go. And this puppy should come right out the wall. Look at that. Now we'll be able to maneuver it, get the blower wheel out of there, Usually got some screws down here. I've already taken these two out here, so it's ready to pop out there. Now you gotta pull these thermistors out gently so you don't ruin them. There we go. Probably gonna need that clip that goes with it there. Okay, let's go ahead and mark this one here top. If you get this in the wrong spots, it knows. Yeah, let's insulate the ground cable, like as if it's gonna short into something when it's already grounded. I mean, come on. There, it's a little bit better. And you can't break that because that drink drips the water down into the pan. Okay, we figured it out there. Let's test unhook from right there and this lifts up. That then releases a lot of that. Here's a plug you better undo. That goes to the motor. Loosens all that up. There we go. And then the only thing we got left is the thermistor there, which we can just unhook those for now. Boom. Less I have to unplug, the better. Okay, there's the motor. Okay, there's two screws here. I couldn't remember. Yeah, this is a lot easier doing it on the wall. I've done it on the wall the last two times. Just like anything, you do it multiple times, it's probably not bad. They love their Phillips screwdrivers. Look at that. What happens to the coil then? Is it getting pinholes in them? Yuck. Well, at least we'll get this cleaned out. You see this fan blade? It's constantly spinning because that's how it senses the temperature, but uh -huh. it uh, it's pretty dirty, so I'm gonna wash that out. Okay, we're gonna go with this evaporator cleaner stuff. My friends at Viper sent it to me. It does not take much. It's very concentrated. Let's go ahead and get this fully disassembled. There's your evaporator that I'm sure was not cheap. Like I said, being careful not to get that in the electronics, which are dangling off the side there. There we go. Sometimes you just can't beat the old fashioned rag. All right, can't wait to do this again on the other one. All right, so both of them are the same size. You can pretty much count the tubings. We got three here, three there, two here, two here. All it is is snap together plastic. So and galvanize, it's gonna rust out again. They did not give you replacement little prongs there to hold the thermistors in the brackets, which is kind of chintzy. There we go, that lines up. This piece here should line up. Snap, boo boo bang. There we go, and that's gonna go around back. 
Just gotta be somewhat gentle. If you did it every day, I don't think it'd be that bad. Like I said, I just, I'm trying to get out of residential, so last thing I wanna do is get real super deep involved in it. And that's just my prerogative. All it is just a clip that kinda grips it and then it conducts into the copper. The other one, that right there. There we go. I want the wires at the bottom. That way the water falls down. It goes away from it. I think that's as good as you're gonna get it. You can see right here, that's where it locked on. So we're gonna lift that back up. And I think we need to slide these two together at the same time down. So what we're gonna do is lift this up, put this motor, I think close into position. Bump like that and it popped in. It's kind of a tight little burger. So you can see the two screws that go there, one screw that goes there. You've got your blower wheel here that goes in. That set screw keeps it from going too far to the left and hitting it and causing it to stop. There. See how it hooks right, right in between there. And then it'll sandwich down on top of it. That can't go nowhere now. Snug that up. Go back and forth a couple times to set that screw into the shaft. There we go. You gotta, just about knowing which way things have gotta go. And it looks like that motor moved on me a little bit. I would say if you're not very good at doing things gentle, probably best off to do this with a screwdriver, back it up till it clicks and walk it on in. That way you don't strip it out. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that back in there. Boom, and she clicked. Here's that ground thing that we complained about. Yeah, it's not going nowhere. So this piece here went like this. Most of these are made so you can't get them wrong. Here we go. This goes up here on the front. in there like that right there take these two electronic plugs underneath here the one big fat one here it goes right here on the front pieces that make it line up pretty easily and then you got this little thin one here there we go that really doesn't even lock in to place with a squat i'm not really impressed but look at that just oop, out it comes We've got this piece, which it locks up here to the top, like that. And that uh, actually, there we go. Go in there like that, just flippy floppy. Imagine doing this without those arms. side, lift it up, and hook it the best you can, and then hook the top and pry out on the bottom. That back up, rehook this. reattached and we're good to go just need to put that insulation back on the outside okay that hooks back up chimney cricket that one reaches that one reaches I always take my batteries out of my electronic torque wrench here I don't want it to be corroded one day 11 pounds there for the quarter inch. We'll do that. We got our POE oil here. It was originally a zoom spout, but it says POE there. And that's what we're gonna use for our lubrication today. And let's go ahead and get those flare ends cut off. 
obviously you guys should know by now that you can use that little piece right there on your cutter to cut off just the very edge. I said that in one of my other videos and somebody was like, they never knew that. And so now I'm going to mention it. See how that can go like that right there. It just cuts off the neck. That's it, just the neck. There we go. Like Max, the burring tool. Probably just go ahead and bend this over like this. That way we don't get chunks into the pipe. And you wanna make sure that you're only getting the edge. You get inside of the pipe and you're gonna screw up your mating surface, which it looks like we got that one. That's one here, you barely even get it in there. Wow. That's why sometimes I'll sit there and just do it with the uh, pliers. I bought this deburring tool here. It don't work super great, but it does work. There. Okay, we'll go ahead and get our firing tool going. There's our quarter inch, and there's our checker. Sometimes you gotta adjust it when you go from one extreme to the other. This makes it brain dead, so for those rookies that haven't done it much, and if you're gonna put the rookie out there doing the fittings, which is what most lead installers do, because they don't wanna do it, and then the whole damn thing leaks because the kid didn't know what he was doing. This is a perfect device for him. Lock it in, hit the button. Can't ask for dumber and brain dead than that. Perfect flare. We can double check that to make sure by using our gauge here, it's milled out. It doesn't go through, but it fits. There we go. And I've got other orbital flaring tools, but honestly, one of the benefits of being a YouTuber is you can get some of these tools either free or, and if you really want to consider it free for all the hours you put into it and all the more you make, it's not really free. But you get to see whether or not you think it's worth a squat. Think the item's a good item? Go to True Tech Tools, pick one up. You survival to save yourself 8%. If not, that's up to you. Okay, and that goes there like that. And that looks like a good little fitting. And this one here looks like a good little fitting. And now we're gonna put a little bit of oil on the back sides here, because we want it to be able to turn on the copper without galling the crap out of it. Okay, rocket science. And there you go, there you go. That's how you make a proper flare. Horrible flaring tool, deburring it properly. And next thing is gonna be using your torque wrench. I know Mr. Mitsubishi, my Ralph there, does not like using oil. Or, he doesn't like using nylog. I don't know if he has a problem with oil or not. Industry standard's always been used a little bit of oil on the back side of that flare. So I like to tighten her and shake her a little bit. Make sure they fit. Match up to each other. See, like that. There we go. Screw it together. Shake it a little bit while I'm doing it. And there we go. Now we should be able to tighten them up. Gotten those foot pounds off of several different ones. Uh, Mitsubishi, uh, Sanyo, uh, Hitachi, and yeah, I'm doing this backwards. There's five. There's 10. I didn't put anything on the threads. There you go, 11. Simple as that. Now the next step up. 27 supposedly for three eighths. And yeah, you should be doing it like this with these, but these got so much down pressure on them that you can do it about either direction. It's obviously easier the other way. Getting close. Yep, she's not twisting no further, so we've got it. There you go. 
we're gonna leave that unhooked or un, un, uh, unattached until we do a pressure test on it. Now that everything's fresh in my mind, shouldn't take long at all. Is uh, pretty tight. They didn't, didn't give us a lot of, there we go. Yeah, they did, imagine that. Well, that one obviously came out a lot easier than the other one did. Now that we know that we just got to lift up a little bit on that and that and that, this comes right out. We'll loosen up this screw here, pop this panel off, and we'll be able to re uh, move everything rather quickly. If you did it day in and day out, like I said, I mean, look how fast I got that one out of there. And I've never installed them before either, so I mean, that's kind of another thing too that that gets that out of the way. That one's just as nasty as the other one. Here's that blower wheel. Loosens right up. Yep, that pulls up and out. And pretty much off to the side. Here's that. Rinse that drain line a little bit. Okay, all gooder. Okay, you got that one back up already, huh? Yep. That one wasn't quite as bad, I bet, was it? They're the same thing. It's just it? just matter of seeing it, how they got it and what to look for. And um, I'm redoing the flares and all that, making sure everything's really good when we get done. What do you got there, camera on? Yeah, I record what I do and then I show it some of the younger guys. Uh, I help with some of the training and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. Plus people just find it interesting. All right, so it looks like Inficon's Flumate is going to get sold on True Tech Tools. I was told earlier today it wasn't, so it only had 245 views on that short, so it's uh, going to get re relisted there. All right, so they always say about 600 pounds area. This goes up to, I think, 500. Okay, there's 175, 180. Let's go around and spray a little bit and see how it does, and then we'll take it on up. Let's see what we get here. I like doing a solid stream myself personally. Okay, let's go look at the other one. And then we'll jump it up a little higher after that. I have seen or heard of leaks not showing up till you hit like 600, 700 pounds, but. Okay, so right now we are at 507 pounds on both sides. Let's go ahead and put our timer on and see if we got much of a drop here. Oh, that's great. Shouldn't have done that, huh? Oh, that's great. It's gonna blow apart in the middle. Chunk ass things. Yeah. These are yellow jacket and they're garbage. Or at least they look like yellow jacket. They came with my kit, the big blue hoses. Whatever they are, they aren't very good. Okay, there's nothing leaking there. Them things have been garbage since the beginning. The little prong thing broke. Had to seal it back on with uh, Loctite. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. There's nothing leaking on any of mine. So we'll go ahead and put her together and start pulling vacuum on it. I can't count on those now because it's about ready to blow apart and the 500 pounds of pressure on it. I really don't want to piece of scrap and all in my eye. We're at 280.4 and we've lost 0.1 pounds in six minutes and a half. I'm not too horribly worried about it leaking. It seems to me that it's holding pretty good. Mm. 
Normally I could pull just one hose, but we got so many heads, I just want to get this thing done as fast as possible. Don't really matter anyway. You're going to do a blank off test, so whether you pull it from another area or whatever, you're still going to isolate it and, and wait and see if it comes off differently. Okay, let's go ahead and let it do its thing here. All right, we got that rewrapped. That was down to 330, valved off. Let's see what it jumps up to. Okay, what I ended up doing was taking Armaflex tape, folding it backwards on itself so you ain't getting your finger through there, and that's gonna be the sticky side out so it's not gonna move. And then just put a couple extra strips of this on the outside. It's pretty packed full of insulation. That should keep any wind, plus with this head being on here like it is, that should keep her pretty well sealed up. All right, so we got that in there. We were down to 200s and now we're at 500 and something. So something just released. Now we're back to 350s area. Boy, you do a little bit. I think that freaking ball valve on that, ball valve on that dam. Yeah, I think the ball valve might have been what was leaking. You can see it wiggling there. That could be it. We're gonna throw that son of a gun away. Valve core tools, garbage. How discouraging, how discouraging. Look, there it is down to 500 and something. Close it, instantly up, no. And instantly back down, no, that's leaking. All right, so we got the CND on there on at least the one. We're gonna let it pull down, see what happens here, and then we hopefully get this done. Need eight pounds, 13 ounces for 130 feet. They didn't write down how many feet they had, but for the most part, we've got one head here that I would say that right there is probably about 25 foot. Another one that is over probably 25, 50 foot. So yeah, I don't, I don't think we're over the 130 mark. So we should be pretty good at that factory spec area. It's beeping, which tells us that the battery's bad. Close that one halfway. Close that one halfway. Some charts will say if you can stay under a thousand on a, an existing system, that you're okay. Um, uh, yeah, there we are, 695, and it's slowing down to a 1.4. That's that's refrigerant. If it was a leak, it would just keep on zooming right on up. And I, I don't have all day to boil refrigerant. I, I don't care about refrigerant. I worry about moisture. And uh, I think we're good. That old, that's one of my old CNDs. I have newer ones and I didn't put them in the bag and I can't find them. They're in my truck, in my toolbox somewhere. Yeah, there it's down to a 0.5 microns a second. Okay, there we go. All right, well, there you go. Eat it up. That way we can disconnect and get off of it. You never remove it before you pull it out of a vacuum. Otherwise, you'll suck air in while you're doing it. All right, just went around all four of them and they're all cold. Cold there too, good. Last time I went wee 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 and a couple of people got all wee wee pissed off. Oh, he's damaging his unit, he's blowing it up. He's gonna kill him, he's gonna blow it all up. Everything's gonna be damaged. Oh my God, he's just an idiot. He don't know what he's doing. He just doesn't wanna figure it out. This is a little too technical for him. Oh yeah. Okay, if you say so, Bob. All right, let's go ahead and finish juicing this in, the last bit here. Had to go get another bottle. That's usually how it goes. Uh, finally got the last three ounces in, so we're at factory spec right now. We're running 402 and 128, which is 44 degrees and 116. Uh, outdoor temperature is probably about 80, so 90, 100, 110. So we're right at 30, 35 over ambient area. So we are running no superheat. That's what your electronic expansion valves are doing. That's impressive. But it has an accumulator, so whatever. Subcooling, we probably do that for shigizzles. We got into a pissing match about this last time. Clamp right there. I think we're pretty well right in line. Uh, you've got, like I said, one head, it's just about right, boom, right there. You got another one that's not even on the other side of this house. And then uh, another one over there and then one over there. So let's do 131. Let's do five, 10, 15, maybe 20. So let's do 20 there, minus 20. 
boom. And then you've got probably 20 over, so 30, let's do 35. And then let's do that one back there, which you gotta go eight up. So let's minus eight. Now let's minus probably at least 40 foot. Okay, and then the other one, you got at least eight up. That's 20 foot, and I would say you probably got another 10 foot on that. So at 10 foot times, and they said right here, they want you to go one ounce for each additional five foot. So two or three ounces, we should be good. So we just go this little bit here. So five, six, seven. Okay, boom. That's it. We've got 21, 22 degrees subcooling, which I think is about where we were at the last time. Imagine that, right? I'm just a freaking idiot though. Common sense, man, it's just a freaking compressor with remote thermistors and variable speed. Big whoop de doo All right, that's gonna wrap it up, guys. I still hate Mitsubishi. Only hate them because their training sucked. I'm sure there's some other training programs out there better than the one I went to, but all the same, it's just really has nothing to do with the equipment being good or bad. It's just the training program sucked. And hopefully, I mean, that guy by that by now is long gone. Um, I've seen the one who I had for the uh, M&P class, but then I also took, because I'm stupid, I think was what, what it was, or I'm illiterate, but I also took the City Maldi class too. That was four days, I think, or something like that. Don't remember. Got the controller for my computer, blah, blah, blah. There's only a few of them out there that we do, and we don't really have that many problems with them. Usually it's install errors, bad flare joints, things like that, leaks, refrigerant leaks, which is generally what's wrong with half of these units where they weren't installed properly to begin with. So other than that, uh, that's gonna wrap that one up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out the first one, which is called I Hate Mitsubishi. I think at the time it's about 76,000 views, which is doing pretty decent. I wanna thank you guys for watching it check out some of the other videos i do mainly refrigeration commercial stuff but i do some residential here and there and a few other things been doing residential for 20 years prior to getting to this company and i've been here nine years there's a little everything there's categories you can check out categories categories whatever so until next time guys we'll catch you on the next one later